So today we are using the quadratic formula to find the axis of symmetry and the x-intercepts of a parabola. Now if we have a quadratic equation, sometimes we can factor the equation and that'll tell us where the intercepts are, where the graph crosses the x-axis, which helps us graph the whole parabola. But sometimes we have quadratic equations that can't be factored. In that case, we can use the quadratic formula to figure out where the x-intercepts are. All right, so here's the generic equation for a parabola in standard form. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, if you understand what the shape of a parabola looks like, you remember it's symmetrical. And this line that cuts the parabola in two symmetrical parts, this is your axis of symmetry. And that's one of the things we're trying to find. Now, the equation for the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals whatever this number is on the x-axis. We can actually use a formula to figure out what that number is. And here's what it is. Negative b divided by 2a. So if we take the coefficients of x squared, x, and then that constant term as a, b, and c, all we do is take negative whatever this is, or the opposite of whatever this number is, divided by 2 times whatever a is. And that will tell you where exactly that line of symmetry will be. Now, how does that help us find the x-intercepts? Well, here's the thing. We know that it's symmetrical. So if we can figure out what this distance is from this axis of symmetry to the x-intercept right here, we can use that same distance on the other side to figure out the other x-intercept. So basically, we just need the axis of symmetry plus a little bit to find the first x-intercept, and then the axis of symmetry minus a little bit to figure out what that x-intercept is on the other side. Now, the hard part is, what is that little bit? Well, again, it turns out there's a formula for that. All right, and that's what's over here. These are my x-intercept formula. See, negative b divided by 2a, there's my axis of symmetry. And if I add a little bit more, I'll find that x-intercept. This is the formula for that little bit more. Now, it's a little complicated, but here it is. We take the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c and divide it by 2 times a. And this will figure out where that x-intercept is right there. Now, notice, if I take negative b divided by 2a, the x the axis of symmetry, and subtract that little bit, I'll get the other x-intercept. All right? And I know this, this formula seems a little complicated, but it's really just calculator work after a while. So let's do a couple examples so you can actually see this. All right, so we've got y equals x squared minus 7x plus 9. Notice, in this situation, the number next to x squared, the a, is 1. The number next to x is negative 7, so b is negative 7. And then the constant term at the end is positive 9, so c is 9. All right, so if I want to find my axis of symmetry, it's going to be x equals negative b. Well, b is negative 7, so the opposite of negative 7 is positive 7, divided by 2 times a. 2 times, in this case, a is 1. So, notice, I get 7 over 2 times 1, which is 2. x equals 7 halves, or about 3 and a half. But that is the equation for my axis of symmetry. Not too bad. All right. Now, let's find the x-intercepts. So, for the x-intercepts, remember, we start with the axis of symmetry, 7 halves. All right. That's what the negative b divided by 2a is here. But we're going to, starting with this one over here, we're going to add a little bit more to it. b squared, so negative 7 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9. And all of that's being square rooted. And then all of that is divided by 2 times a, 2 times 1. All right, it's a little bit of a mess right now, but let's simplify this down a bit, all right? So inside the square root, it's important to follow the order of operations. Before we can do any of this subtraction, we've got to do the exponent, negative 7 squared, which is 49. And we also have to do the multiplication before we subtract. 4 times 1 times 9 is 36, 
all right? So all of that simplifies to that so far. And 2 times 1, of course, is 2. All right. And 7 halves plus. Now I could do the subtraction under the square root sign. The square root of 49 minus 36, that's going to be 13. So the square root of 13 divided by 2. So here is my x-intercept in exact form. But I'm going to have you put this in a calculator so we can get an approximation. And if you just type this into a calculator, you get about 5.3. So we can say that the x-intercept, that first x-intercept, is about 5.3, 0. All right. So there's the first x-intercept. Now, the second x-intercept, you would think, oh, we're going to have to go through that whole thing again. Well, not really. Because remember, this whole equation for the x-intercepts, the only difference is one of them we add the amount and the other one we subtract. So if I just take this one over here and I do 7 halves minus the square root of 13 divided by 2, I'll get the other x-intercept. So I'll save myself a bunch of time by just subtracting it instead of adding it. And of course, if I put this in the calculator, I end up getting about 1.7. So there's the other x-intercept, about 1.7, 0. And there's my two intercepts. And notice, there's no way I could have got this by factoring it, because when you put this in a calculator, it's an irrational number. It's going to be some decimal that goes on forever. That's why we need this formula to calculate it, and in this case, approximate it. All right, let's do another example that's slightly harder, because this one's a little bit easier, because the number in front of x squared is 1. Notice this second example, the number in front of x squared is not 1 this time. Actually, the number in front of x squared is 2, which adds a little complexity to things, but not that much. The number in front of x is a positive 3, so b equals 3. And then the constant term at the end is negative 8. All right, so let's start with our axis of symmetry. x equals negative b, so negative 3, divided by 2 times a. In this case, a is 2. And if I simplify this again, negative 3 over 4. So there is my axis of symmetry. So off of that, I can start finding my x-intercepts now. OK. So here we go. It's going to be our axis of symmetry plus the square root of b squared. In this case, it's 3 squared minus 4 times a times c. 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 8. All that's being square rooted and divided by 2 times a. 2 times, in this case, a is 2. All right, looks like a lot of work. But again, it's all just basic math here. All right, so under the square root sign, remember, we've got to do the exponent and the multiplication before we can subtract. 3 squared is 9. 4 times 2 is 8, times negative 8 is negative 64. So this is going to be a minus negative 64. All right, all divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. OK, this is looking a little better. Here we go. So let's finish off this irrational part here. 9 minus negative 64 is positive 73. So the square root is 73 over 4. All right, and again, I'm going to have you approximate this. If we put this in our calculator, this comes out to about 1.4. So guess what? We just found our first x-intercept, 1.4, 0. All right. Now, to find the other x-intercept, we use the exact same formula, except instead of adding, we're going to be subtracting from the axis of symmetry. So it'll be negative 3 fourths minus the square root of 73 over 4. All right, so this work's already done. We just put this in a calculator. It comes out to about negative 2.9. So we just found the other x-intercept, negative 2.9 zero. There we go. All right. So the key here is using that formula, the quadratic formula. All right. Make sure you follow the order of operations within the square root symbol. That's a common mistake. All right. And practice using it because I know it looks confusing, but it's actually not that bad once you write it down.
It's just basic order of operations. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that like button and also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.